I wasn't expecting the mosque to look like this. It's a very good place if you want to be a Muslim. Japan is one of the top countries for suicide. We have a chance to meet the Imam of the mosque here. Bismillah. Pakistan and Bangladesh. Two countries that have changed my life forever. Two countries that completely changed the way I look at the religion of Islam. And two countries that made me fall in love with halal food. What up everybody, hope you're feeling good, you're feeling great. But as you can tell, this isn't Pakistan, this isn't Bangladesh, no, no, no. This is Tokyo, Japan. And this man right here is a real Pakistani. What up Zishan? Nice doing? to meet you, man. Uh, Zishan is one of my followers. We hooked up in Singapore. We took you all on a halal food tour there. And so now we are here in Tokyo today to explore what Muslim culture is like in Japan. Japan, a country of 123 million people, but only 250,000 Muslims. But as Zishan tells me here, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. So today's video is all about showing my appreciation to the, pe to the followers of Islam and to show you what it's like to be a Muslim living here in Japan. Bismillah. <laughs> Bismillah. Oh, and there he goes. Okay. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna lead with that right foot. And here we go. Uh, now we haven't gotten permission or anything. We literally just walked in here. Um, so let's see what happens. Wow, it's kind of got like museum vibes to it almost. They've got a variety of like books here, all written in Japanese. Some decorative plates over there. It would be nice to take one of these back home as a, an ornament. A souvenir, souvenir, yeah, yeah. And we've got this cool little area in here with kind of like this makeshift fireplace and a little fountain. Uh, it's very, very nice cultural center to, to start things off. Super clean. Aha, we were trying to find the mosque. And this sign is telling us where to go. All right, let's go up. Okay, so the bottom floor, it, it was kind of giving me like museum vibes almost, but stepping up here and, oh wow. Oh, look at the beautiful architecture. The white, the black stripes, and you've got all this gorgeous detail in here. The blue and the gold. Uh, Zishan, what, what, what is that symbol above the mosque, that, that triangle? I'm not sure, but that's... Uh, the symbol for Allah. It's uh, Arabic calligraphy. Arabic calligraphy, okay. Yeah, and you know the mosque is always just made so nice and beautiful. And yeah, it's just so colorful and vibrant, and this is... I wasn't expecting the mosque to look like this. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah, I had no idea. I, I didn't look up any pictures online because I wanted to be surprised. on the walls there. Oh, beautiful. Wow, and then over here, it looks like another part of the, the cultural center. I need to give a major shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Skip Lagged. Now you guys know me, I would never recommend a product or a website or a service that I didn't use myself and that I didn't trust or believe in. I have used Skip Lagged for over 10 years now to find cheap flights all over the world. Skip Lagged has literally saved me tens of thousands of dollars on cheap flights. I've been traveling for so long that I often forget that I know a lot of tricks that a lot of people don't know. Skip lag is one of those cheap flight hacking tricks. You're gonna find some of the lowest prices on the internet if you use Skip Lag to find your flights. Check out the Skip Lag app, check out the Skip Lag desktop website because from my experience, flight prices are generally cheaper if you book them on a desktop PC. Major shout out again to Skip Lag for sponsoring this video. Now let's go inside. Uh, and with any mosque in the world, we are going to take our shoes off here before entering, put them over here. And they're the mosque manners in case you didn't know. No shorts, no tank tops, and no shoes. And here we go. All right, and in we go. And of course, I'm gonna be whispering um, out of respect um, to everyone here um, that, that's praying. But wow, look at this. This is spectacular. I did not expect this in Tokyo. That old cliche. But wow, this is gorgeous. I've seen a lot of beautiful mosques over the past couple of years traveling Pakistan, Bangladesh, Morocco, Dubai, but this one is, this one just feels and looks so special to me. Wow, I mean, look at the amazing designs. Look at the architecture, look at the colors, the stained glass windows. And we've got this, this carpet here, this rich green turquoise colored carpet. This is outstanding. What do you think, man? This is beautiful, isn't it? I'm speechless. Oh, I love the windows. I can't, I can't believe it. Wow. And, and the carpet. It feels so soft on my feet. Wow. 
This is outstanding. There's a certain feel that you get when you enter religious buildings um, around the world and walking into this place, there's just this feeling of like calmness. I, I, I can't even describe it. Just so serene, so peaceful in here. What a special place for the Muslims of Tokyo and the Muslims of all around the world to visit and to pray in. It looks like it was just built yesterday. It, this, it looks brand new. Whoops, uh, I just embarrassed myself in front of uh, Allah and, and everybody. I, despite visiting many mosques around the world and trying to learn as much about Islam as I can, I had no idea that men are not permitted to go upstairs. The area upstairs is only for women. I walked up the steps, uh, some very, very nice ladies greeted me with some amazing smiles and they said, oh, this is the women's area only. I said, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed, thank you, uh, and quickly went downstairs. So if you're thinking about visiting a mosque and you don't know anything about Islam, don't go up there, unless of course you're a woman. But wow, Zishan tells me this place was built in the 1930s. It looks like it was built in the 2030s. Like this is, is brand new. Just the aesthetics, everything here. It's so clean, so pure, so vibrant, so beautiful. I saw these garments here that almost look like robes with this really nice stitching on them. And Zishan, these are for Friday prayer. Yes. So wait, there's a white one here and a blue one. What are the differences? Oh, I don't know, it could be maybe for Eid. Eid. Thing, man I'm, I'm stunned that was that was that was something special we got to hear the call to prayer yeah, we got to the Adhan was amazing the, his voice was so beautiful yeah man it was it was wow this was uh, a, a tremendous start to the day really really blown away assalamu alaikum how are you brother good what's your name Gibran Gibran nice to meet you man Gibran talked to Zishan inside and Gibran said he wants to be in my video where are you from brother Indonesia. Indonesia, really? Yeah. Are you just are you visiting Korea? No. Or, or, Korea. No. Right, sorry. <laughs> Indonesia has the largest Muslim population in the full world. Wow. Indonesia yeah. has the largest Muslim population. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, brother? Assalamu. Buddy, what do you want to tell the world about Indonesia and, and Islam? It's a very good place if you want to be a Muslim. Like everyone's like, some people are bad, some people are nice, but that's how it goes. Amazing. And you're saying in, in Tokyo it's a great place to be a Muslim or Indonesia is a great place? I mean, in Indonesia, no, you don't get stared at. Like sometimes in the trains, like sometimes people with hijabs, it, they can see that you're Muslim. Sometimes they get stared at. Some people are just nicer. So, yeah, it's like that. Wow, those are very wise words. I really appreciate you uh, sharing that with the world, brother. Thanks. How old are you, sir? Uh, 11. 11. Wow. but you. You speak like you're 22. You speak like a very wise man. Wow, very impressive. Thanks. So nice to meet you, brother. I wish you all the best. Peace be with you, brother. Check this out. Uh, our little buddy here, actually, he's showing us around. There's actually a halal shop and halal market inside the cultural center here, but we got here it's just as it's closed. It's, it's gonna open very soon. Very soon, okay. Great. We'll stick around and, and see what's in there. Assalamu alaikum, sister. What's your name? Uh, Aisha. Aisha, I'm Brent. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And, and you are running this shop here? This uh, is your shop? I'm one of the staff. One of the staff, okay. okay. So we have now entered the halal market that is here at the cultural yeah, center. These are the snacks. Show, show me your favorite snack, man. What's, what's your favorite snack? This. Those ones? Yeah. The babeto spaghetti? Yeah. Can I buy you a bag? No, no, no. Oh, I have to. You've been so nice to me. I'm going to buy you a bag, buddy. Do you want anything else? Do you want a, do you want a no, juice no, no, or a drink? No, no, you sure? Uh, no. Okay. What else, what else is good in here though, bro? What else do you like? <laughs> Get some baklava. <laughs> baklava, smart man, yeah. Wow, what a, what a humble kid, man. This, this, the, the botol. This is a very, uh, uh, what is it called? A popular thing in Indonesia, a drink, a tea. Oh, it jasmine is, tea. It's very, it's weed, it's, it's good. Cool, it's good. can I buy you one? Do you want one? No. You I'm sure? Like, I, I think you should try I should try one, okay. If you're telling me to try one, I will try one, buddy. Here you go. Thanks, dude. I'll be waiting outside, all right? You'll be waiting outside? Okay. okay. Wow, look at all the stuff here. Hot and crispy fried chicken. That looks mega dank, actually. I'm gonna have to ship me a bag of that back home. 
We got all these different halal cuts of meat here. These are Papa Dom's. Oh, Papa Dom's, dang. No, no Mr. Pringles face on there either. Wow. This is cool, a little convenience store. So after you come and say your prayers. Oh, no way, box chicken Nahari? I've never seen that in my life. Now, if I lived in Japan, I'd buy all of this. Yeah, right? They got, again, of course, you got the classic ramen and things like that. I have. Spinach. Very, very good. All right. And there you go, man. There's your blue spaghetti. <laughs> and here's my, what the heck is this called? Lebatol. Lebatol. No, it's called Tehbatol. Tehbatol. We have gotten so many facts wrong, everybody. <laughs> Major shout out to my new friend, Assad. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Assad, you are from Uzbekistan. Yeah. And you've been living here in Tokyo for three years? Yeah. Okay, so we were under the impression that this mosque was built in 1930, but that's only part, partly true, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, exactly. So the first mosque here was built in 1938 by Tatar Turks, who just escaped from a Russian revolution, like uh, Bolshevik revolution, around 1925, something like this. They built a community here. So after that, they built, they need a mosque, they built a, also like a school for their children here. And then after building the mosque, uh, they like, uh, like let's say at, at around like 1990s, let's say, the mosque, the condition was a bit bad, you know, like and they d d destroyed it and new, uh, like the Turkish government took the area, took the responsibility and rebuilt the mosque. By the uh, like by like Turkish government, let's say, and took and started to make it like a Turkish cultural center. Like the first floor is like cultural center. Okay. Second floor is mosque, as you can see. And so they, so they've called it so Sakura. The Sakura tree grows right outside. Yes. And yeah. so they called the Sakura mosque. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Sakura that's incredible. Mosque. Yeah. Wow, I'd love to be here. We, in you know, the logo is the same. We that. have Sakura, some Sakura leaves. You can just see the, the logo. No, I did. I didn't see the logo. Okay. Wow, I'm so glad I met you, awesome. We're learning. I'm so glad I met you, man. We're learning so much. Half moon, and then we have the building and Sakuras. Oh, okay. So you've got the Turkish elements, you've got the Islamic element with the mosque, and then you've got the Japanese, Japanese element yes. with the Sakura. Yes. Wow. Tokyo Jami. Jami means the gathering place. Jami in Arabic. That was one of the big questions I had. Well, what, is, what, what does Jami mean? So that means gathering place. This yeah, is the like Tokyo Jami gathering mosque. place. It, like Jami is like a gathering place like used for mosques. Like gathers everyone to pray together. Oh, okay. And not only pray, but also eat, talk, whatever, you know? Like gathering people, like uniting people, let's say. That's amazing, man. I, I, I was saying earlier in the video, I walked in, you can just feel like the energy and like, yeah, in this, the like, love. In this world with full of individualism, we need such kind of like places, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But in one month, more than 20 More than converts. 20 Muslims, more than 20 people are converting to Islam. Here per in month this month. Here. Yeah. Wow, that's outstanding. And 90% of them is the Japanese people. 90% yeah. Japanese. And last year, this, uh, like wow. I heard it from the Imam, wow, like wow, wow. last year it was around uh, like one month, 10 people, something like this. But this year it just like booming. That's <laughs> it. Why, really. why do you think people are slowly waking up and realizing, you know, Islam is the way? What, what do you think inclines them in, in Japan to Islam? Mm, I think, you know, the Japanese people, uh, the real workaholic, let's say, like, a re they, and also, also, like, a bit stress. Like, they need something. I mean, they have. A specific place that they have to fill with so they are finding Islam and they're putting the Islam on that to that place then they are just finding peace let's say yeah. yeah they need something that help them to get rid of such kind of stressful situations like okay. accepting the life as itself and you know like having more in like nice like enjoyable a bit you know, peaceful life yeah. without that much like uh, too much stress sure. that's for example, you know Japan is one of the top countries for suicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a very it's obsessive it's of work culture. A lot, like yeah, it's because of the work. They also have specific vocabulary. I just forgot, <laughs> forgot <laughs> the specific vocabulary for just uh, suicide because of the work. And I think yeah, they they have uh, like they are needing something. And I think they're finding something from Islam. So now we had to come back to the actual mosque itself because we're looking through it with different eyes with with our friend uh, As Asadullah. Am I pronouncing that right? Okay, thank you so much, brother. What a place. Yeah. What, a, what a place. And so now that I'm looking at it and realizing that it was just built 24 years ago, I'm like, okay, now that makes a lot more sense because it is so, so beautiful. Is the Imam here today? Yeah, the Imam is here. 
you think it's possible if we could maybe talk to him for just a, a few minutes? Let's just go and let's just ask him. Yeah, please. That would, that would be great. Very hard to leave this place. As uh, my friend was telling me, people come here and they just relax and they meditate. And it's such a, such a peaceful place. That's the only, only word to describe it. Peaceful. A ton of Japanese people um, just went up to the mosque. This, I'm, I'm really, I, I mean, I'm not surprised. I just, I guess I am surprised in a country where there are so few Muslims, like, there's a lot of people going in and out of this mosque in this cultural center on a Tuesday afternoon. Very impressive. I, oh, just the, the happiness that I'm feeling uh, in this country and especially right here in this mosque surrounded by all these amazing people. This is, this is why I travel. I mean, <laughs> I've, been, I've been kind of stepping back and watching like the friendship develop here um, between these two literal strangers. And it's so pure and it's so beautiful. And we got my new friendship with my main man here. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are so, so cool, man. Okay, we are very lucky, very blessed, and very fortunate because we have a chance to meet the Imam of the mosque here. And his Welcome to Tokyo Jami. Thank you. Hi. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Hi. Konnichiwa. Yoroshiku onegaishimasu. And you are and you are the translator who yes, will be I'm translating be for us. Yes. What's your name? Aisha. Aisha. Yeah. Okay. First off, please tell him how thankful and grateful I am for welcoming me into the mosque, for sharing uh, some of his story here and for just um, showing so much love. Please tell him that I greatly appreciate it. Biz teşekkür ediyoruz bu tarz faaliyetlerle beraber camimizin ve kültür merkezimizin tanıtımına katkı sundukları için biz de onlara teşekkür ediyoruz. Thank you so much for coming to Tokyo Jami. Your contribution for the promotion of Tokyo Jami is really important for us also. Oh, trust me, the, the, the pleasure is all mine. This is this is a great a great honor. I'll be very quick because I, I know you're very very busy. Um, um, the most the two questions first how long have you been the imam at this mosque and then number two what do you want the world to know about the beauty of Islam and especially what it's like to be a Muslim here in Japan a city a country where there are so few Muslims Birinci olarak diyor ne kadardır burada imamlık yapıyorsunuz diyor. İkinci olarak da e, burada Müslüman olmanın güzellikleri nedir diyor. Neler gözlemlediniz bugüne kadar diyorsun. Beş yıldır buradayım ben. E, beş sene önce Türkiye'den geldim. E, haliyle burada Müslüman olmanın güzellikleri çok fazla. Çünkü çoğu gayrimüslim olan bir ülkenin içinde siz bir azınlıksınız ama bir ve berabersiniz. Onun için Tokyo Camii bu azınlık olan Müslümanların buluşma noktası. Bunu burada fazlasıyla hissediyoruz. Uh, I have been appointed from Republic of Turkey five years ago, oh. working as an imam for five years in here. And the, the beauty of being a Muslim in Japan is actually, you know, there's a small community in here. Uh, Muslims are minority, but this is why actually we come together, we become more connected to each other. This is, and Tokyo Jami is one of the places where all Muslim community come together. This is the beauty in, in Japan. Burada Cuma günleri, e, Ramazan'da ve bayram günlerinde her milletten, aklınıza gelebilecek her milletten Müslümanı bir arada bulma şansınız var. Siyahı, beyazı, sarısı, kırmızısı, Endonezi, Malezi, Afrikalısı, Pakistanlısı fark etmiyor Türk'ü. Hepsini bir arada görüyorsunuz, hepsi yan yana, hepsi bir ve beraber bir şekilde. And our Friday prayers, we host almost thousand, minimum thousand, thousand. people. Wow. And you may find from different nationalities, different minorities, different cultures and countries, Indonesian, Pakistani people or Bangladesh from all over the world. Yes, this is where we can experience this every uh, Friday in here. Wow, amazing. And you were born in Turkey? Türkiye'de doğdum, evet. Yes, oh. I was, he was born in Turkey. I love, I love Turkey Türkiye'de, so much. Türkiye'de, çok teşekkür ediyorum. Türkiye'de so bu ortamı göremezdim. Ee, Tabi burada olmanız lazım ki bu ortamı görün ve yaşayın. I would never imagine that I can experience that kind of things in Turkey. But I, I can I, I experience that kind of, you know, uh, cultural gathering in here in Tokyo Jam. Türkiye'de wow. olsam yine bu beyefendiyle tanışma şansım olmayacak <gülüyor> nihayetinde. Yeah. Tokyo Jam'sinde tanışıyoruz. I would never meet someone like you <gülüyor> if, if I wasn't appointed to Tokyo Jam. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I can't thank you enough, my friend. Şükran. Şükran. Thank you. Thank you so <gülüyor> much. Şükran. Cezaikumullah. Yes. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. Teşekkür in Turkey. I wish you all the best. Yeah, how? Teşekkür. Teşekkür. Teşekkür. Teşekkür. Thank you. Hi. Yes, it was a pleasure. Oh my gosh. They're, they're going to give Zishan the Japanese Quran. Wow. I need to learn Japanese now. <laughs> yeah, man. The smile on, on Zishan's face, man. It, it, could, it could light up the night sky. Wow. Thank you so much, bro. I, I have so much love for Turkey, for my Turkish friends. And there it is. This is the Japanese Quran that oh, was translated wow. last year and published. In... It's just published? They just published it? Last in year. Japanese last... for the first yes, time? Yes, yes. Wow. I can't believe that. All these, uh, all these years for it to be the first 
Japanese published Quran. That's amazing. And it's got a beautiful blue color yes. on the front. Bu, Türkiye'nin tabii biliyorsunuz orijinal rengi ve e, şöyle lalesiyle beraber süslemesiyle. You know, the, the, the main color for the turkey is the blue, turquoise. Ah, sure. Yes, and the, the representation of our, you know, the, the turkey is the tulip actually. Everyone thinks that it's Netherlands, but it's not. Oh, yes. yes. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the tulip actually belongs to Turkey. In the 16th century, it was taken from Turkey. The original, <gasps> yes, the tulip was Turkey taken and went back to Netherlands, but it's actually from Turkey. Wow, the, the I did not know that. Also, That's a video for another day, I guess. Yeah, That's translator. crazy. Wow. Wow, okay, and that, that's the translator. Yes. Kyoko Nishida. Yes. Wow, the amount of time that it must take, that it must have taken her to translate the Quran into Japanese. Eight or ten years. Eight to ten years, almost a decade. See how cool is this, man? I'm so emotional right now. I didn't think I'd be coming to get Japanese Quran that took eight to ten years to translate. This is a piece of history, man. This is this is so new. Oh, thank you so much, Shukran. Thank you so, so much. Zishan, what words do you even have to describe that experience, man? I don't know what just happened, but that was probably the best day of my life. <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm, I'm so like moved and like uh, how, how welcoming everybody was. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, this, this is very similar at every mosque around the world. I mean, yeah. the Muslims are beautiful people. They're friendly people. Yeah. Welcome, yeah, hospitality, man. But a Japanese mosque and see the different cultures and the Quran and, and Japanese writing and the, the beautiful building, the architecture, and the young kid, like yeah, the young kid was—he was special, man. He was and special. And the shop, like that mosque. This mosque is truly special, and uh, I just felt like I was walking on a piece of heaven, literally. And I wish more people can come and visit this mosque, really. Yeah, uh, please. Even if you're not a Muslim, come. Literally, yeah. it's empty, and it's such a shame because it's open to everyone, and not many people are taking advantage. Like this is a God's house, you know. Wow. Well, yeah. thank you for joining me on the on this mission today, brother. Anytime. Really, really thank appreciate you. it. Check it out. Okay, we're all cleaned up, all showered after an insane day of eating here in these Tokyo streets. And we have arrived at my hostel. We are at a place called the Millennials in Shibuya. And apologies, I'm trying to be quiet because I think some people might be sleeping uh, throughout the dorm room here. You guys know how much I love hostels, but I've never stayed anywhere quite like this. So the bed is kind of set up as like a sofa right now. But if we pull out our iPad controls here, ooh, what's this do? What's this do? Huh? Oh my God. The bed is reclining down to an actual bed. And then just like we had it before, we can push it up into a sofa. This room is going for about $93 a night, but on the weekends, it can be up to like $110 a night well worth it though uh check out my instagram reels if you want to see the rest of the hostel because they're playing like copyrighted music all throughout so i can't show it but this place is such a vibe you've got your own like personal fan up here they also give you this toiletry bag there's slippers in there they've got some um towels there's a toothbrush there's like personal care wipes this is easily oops oh i think it's got to go down a little bit more uh this is easily like one of the comfiest hostel beds I've ever stayed on in my life. You've got the shelf space there, and then down below, you've got uh, an area to store your luggage. And then of course, when it's time for nighty night. <laughs>